your audio. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for joining our webinar on Unleashing the Power of WhatsApp. Uh, we have a very exciting agenda lined up. Um, I'd like to um, introduce my co-speakers. My name is Yorana Sabi. I'm the founder of Digital Solutions Group. And with me today, I have David Cohen for Meta, who will talk about business messaging and how all different kinds of applications of WhatsApp, which would be really, really exciting. And then we'll have uh, Prashast, who's the Director of Product and Sales Specialist at Netcore Cloud, talking about how Netcore um, utilizes WhatsApp and its marketing automation platform. Um, so um, David, as I mentioned, will cover uh, the capabilities and the future features such as payment and business search. Prashast will give us some case studies in about 10 minutes. And uh, we look at different verticals solving industry and business problems. And then we're also very lucky to have Sridhar with us today from Flyfish. And he'll talk about uh, AI capabilities. Um, and hopefully we'll have 15 minutes or so even more for Q&A because this, this webinar is really about you and about your learnings. And we really would like to encourage you to uh, make it as interactive as possible and ask as many questions as possible. So I'll just give you a quick overview around DSG. Uh, we're turning 25 years old uh, this year uh, in September. Um, I started the business when I was around seven. <laughs> uh, we've got offices uh, in the Netherlands, uh, in, in Parkhurst and Rosebank, uh, in the Seychelles uh, and, and Newtown. We sponsor Free University and uh, in Cape Town. And um, we, we, we partner with our customers to build comprehensive solutions, which innovate business relationships to yield mutual return on investment. And our people and diverse technology enable anywhere, anytime access to products and services, ensuring a customer-centric focus. Um, we started in 98, as I mentioned. Uh, we have done a variety of uh, innovations in the African market. We've recently expanded into Europe and we're uh, launching in the Middle East soon as well in Dubai. We already have clients in that region. Um, and um, we have a variety of businesses within the group. Today, we'll be talking specifically around uh, digital marketing. But just so the audience is aware that we also have a, a cybersecurity business called Digital Resilience. In fact, I'm currently in Las Vegas at a Splunk conference uh, and, uh, that talks about cybersecurity and, and utilization of data and cybersecurity. Uh, we also have a cybersecurity insurance product called the Insurer, a variety of custom experience businesses, enablement businesses, and a mobile virtual network enabler within the group that has enabled multiple MVNOs, as you can see on the left-hand side, like on Seta Mobile, Digital Mobile, and DSTV Internet. Overall, DSG has got a quite a unique service model. We provide a complete integrated customer experience strategy, business and tech consulting, system integration, digital transformation, service design and UX, data and analytics. We're going to talk a lot about artificial intelligence and machine learning today and how we could use creative design, digital mobile media, marketing automation and personalization to enhance wallet share and lifetime value for customers. And within the group as well, we support MVNE and digital resilience, as already mentioned. These are some of our partners, but our focus on, uh, will be on Netcore. Netcore is a, a similar age to, to DSG, have, have done multiple acquisitions um, and is a true global player in the marketing automation space. I don't want to steal the thunder from the presentation. So this was a quick introduction to uh, DSG and Netcore. We're very proud about our partnership in Africa and work very, very closely together. So without further ado, I will uh, ask David to please share his screen and uh, start his presentation. Great. Over to you, David. All right. Now we're good. Um, yeah. All right. Good morning, everyone. Nice to be here. Uh, I'm very excited to take part in the webinar together with uh, everyone involved. Uh, my name is David. I am a partner manager uh, covering all of EMEA for what we call business messaging. So across the meta ecosystem, we have a few different apps where you can you know, message people and message businesses. And so uh, today, the focus is obviously going to be on WhatsApp, but um, we do cover all of the, the platforms sort of at a, at a broad level. So I will dive on in. 
the way a lot of people ask me sort of how does Meta think about business messaging and then, you know, how does WhatsApp sit within that? And I think that the way that we think about it is that, you know, historically, the, you know, the telephone into cell phones and everything sort of in between letter mailing, all of that, right? It's continued to evolve and change the way we communicate with one another. And it impacts every element of how we communicate with each other, especially when you talk about businesses trying to talk to their customers. And in sort of a historical view, and even, I mean, up till today, in many cases, there was this concept that like the consumer relationship, the customer relationship is this like beautiful flowing thing where it doesn't matter if you have retail stores, you're only online, if you utilize one service or many services, but there's like this harmony between how a customer can reach you and have discussions with you or learn about your product, um, everything from marketing all the way into like, you know, post-sale. And we think when we look at it in reality is that it's actually pretty broken, right? A customer doesn't always know, hey, should I go to the website for this? And then you maybe call into a call center and they tell you, no, you should actually uh, send us an email for this issue or why don't you use the app? And so what we really see across the board is that business messaging is a solution that can actually do all of this. And Meta as a, as a business, right, we actually have some of the biggest platforms globally. Um, so looking across, like I said, all of business messaging, we have billions of people using all of these tools and services in different ways all over the world. And I want to just, you know, caveat that I'll be focusing again on WhatsApp, but a lot of the things I'm talking about, you can do on Messenger and you can do on Instagram. So depending on the markets that you focus on or the way that you do your business, any or all of these may be relevant, right? And so there's also unique, you know, uh, audiences and ways to use each of these tools efficiently, but I'm going to be honing in on, on WhatsApp today. Another question that I get, and maybe for all of you in Africa, it's a little less uh, of an issue, but I can tell you I cover all of EMEA um, and I've worked all over the world. A lot of people are like, well, do people actually talk to businesses on these channels? Is that something that happens? Should I enter this type of market? Is it something that I should do? And the answer is absolutely yes, right? A billion people, this is already a year old data, but a billion people message a business every week across all three of our platforms, right? And so just think about that. Those are people that are using these apps and services like you and me to message our friends and family. And then are now saying, I expect the business to be on the other side and also answer me in the same way. And if you're not doing that, and if you're not set up to do that, you know, you're really missing out on a huge opportunity to create really strong relationships with your customers, um, but also just provide really good service, right? At the end of the day, that's what we all want. I want to talk to a business efficiently, easily, quickly, get an answer. Um, and it doesn't have to be overly complicated, especially when you're talking about, you know, a service like WhatsApp. And using a partner of what we call a BSP like Netcore is how you can enable, you know, really good, robust experience across any part of the funnel. So how do we think about messaging and WhatsApp and the outcomes and the way we charge and sort of what do we do? We've really broken it out into two sides. So we have what we call business initiated use case, which means that the business is actually sending the first message, right? And that can be from an ad or what we call a marketing message. Maybe there's a notification that you want to send to a customer about a package or something like that. All of these are issues where the business is reaching the customer first. The other side of it is what we call user initiated use cases, right? And user initiated use cases means that the user has reached out to you first. So you've posted a link maybe um, to your WhatsApp phone number or you have it on a billboard, right? We see this happening, I know, in many markets, right? So a customer is reaching out to you. That's what we call a user-initiated um, conversation. And so the way that this works is we have a different charging model and we charge per conversation. So I know a lot of people are familiar with SMS where it's per message. And we've really tried to break out the fact that, you know, WhatsApp as a platform is really about communication and having more than just a one-way message. That said, we understand that there are times and it is important to think about one-way messages. And so just uh, at the beginning of June, we launched sort of a new view of how we think about different types of conversations. So um, on the kind of left middle, so utility, authentication, and marketing, these are all uh, business initiated use cases. What is a utility? A utility is, hey, your appointment was delayed. Would you like to reschedule? Or your appointment is tomorrow. Are you coming in? Authentication is, Think about anything that you would do on like an OTP style authentication. So that's able to be done now in WhatsApp and those have different rates. And then last but not least is marketing, right? You want to send a coupon or you want to send a newsletter to your customer.
customers. So we have different rates for each of these. And I know that it, for those of you that have been investing in or looking at WhatsApp for some time, especially in the African market, we reduced rates pretty significantly in this last update, especially in African markets, because we know that they've been a bit cost prohibitive, prohibitive, especially when compared to SMS. So I definitely recommend taking another look and talking with the partners to see like, hey, is there new opportunities? Are there things that now I can do that maybe felt a little cost prohibitive previously? And then last but not least, service is customer service, right? So that's all the user initiated uh, conversations. And so we've really tried to split it up and, and make very clear lines on how to do each of these things to simplify it for you um, and your customers when you, when you speak to them so they know exactly what kind of message they're getting. And when we talk about these things, again, we really think about it in the entire customer journey. So at the very top, there's awareness and there's then consideration, post-purchase, maybe re-engagement. And you can kind of find areas for each of these. Um, we are also continuing to add features and functions so that it's easier to find your business. So in some markets, we have a business search where you can actually search for business and the number shows up. Um, we're working on things all the time, our catalog being more robust because we want to create really rich experiences in WhatsApp and enable them, again, through partners. And so once you have sort of started to play with this and set it up, I think it's important to think about all of the other ways um, that you can, you know, kind of get the most value out of it. I think a lot of businesses, you know, at the grassroots are like, we need this for customer support and customer service. And I agree, it's an easy place to think about starting because it feels so natural. But we actually see a lot of success on marketing and other use cases where customers, again, are used to having this conversation in WhatsApp. And you need to also let them know that, hey, you can now do this in WhatsApp as well. It's not just about message me when you have a problem, but maybe message me because you're interested in something. So I just want to throw that out there because I think a lot of people shift towards the customer service side immediately, but there's a lot more that you can do across the platform. I don't think this will be a surprise to any of you kind of in market, but um, obviously when we look at the platforms itself, right, and what, you know, this is South Africa specifically, this was the data that I was able to pull before this call, but, you know, WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, Messenger are the top platforms um, that, you know, internet users are, are wanting to use on a social media front every month, right? And so WhatsApp obviously being number one by, by a pretty fair margin, like you want to be there. This is where people are having their conversations with friends and family. You should be there as well for your business. And then on the other side, um, when you look at what's the favorite platform, again, WhatsApp is way out in front, right? And so I think, I think about this in two ways. I think about this, first of all, that like, it's great that people want to use it and you should be there. But I also think about if people are, you know, using and enjoying it, and I include us in people, right? I use these platforms as well. Um, we also want to think about how do we maintain that high standard and that high quality in the platform? How do we avoid spam? How do we make sure that the messages that we're sending are, are, are in a timely fashion and useful so that, you know, I always think about it the other way. If you were the one getting the message or if you were the one reaching out to business, right? You don't want that to degrade the way you use the platform as a customer, as a person. So I always kind of look at that from both sides, but you can see that across the board, you know, WhatsApp specifically is, is big in market. And again, I don't think that's a surprise to anyone in the call, but I, I like to show it because I think it's, it's important for those that are thinking like, oh, maybe not, or I'm not so sure. One thing that I definitely recommend when I think about and talk to clients and partners about how do I get this started? What should I be doing? I actually usually tell companies, start with one thing. I know that I show that funnel and it's like, hey, these are all of the things you can do and it's really good and it is, but it takes time. It takes time to build that process and to think about it. And so where I usually tell businesses to do is think of one area, one challenge you have, one use case that you think maybe you can migrate into the platform because it gives you a really easy entry point. And it also makes it really, really simple for your customers to understand why should I message you on WhatsApp versus X versus sending you an email or versus going to an app. So as an example, when you sell a product, just ask the person, hey, do you want to track your package here in WhatsApp? And that's something that you can do. And then, you know, it auto redirects. And what's great about it is when, you know, for instance, in retail, I know that anywhere between 50 to 70% of calls to call centers or emails in when I talk to retailers is actually, where is my package? Okay, get in front of that. Show that you can get it in WhatsApp or send them updates in WhatsApp. And again, it's one use case, but think about how much time that 50 to 70% opens up for your agents, for your teams, for your marketing teams to do other more interesting things with those customers and provide them higher value. So here are a bunch of different examples. I won't go through all of them, but like 
they're just ideas, right? What are some things that you can pick off and say, hey, you know what? Let's try that in WhatsApp or let's migrate that into WhatsApp. And you'll really see that the value goes in. And then you start to add the layers on top, right? You start to say, hey, you know, it's not just about tracking the package, but maybe you want to get a follow-up because the product that you ordered, we recommend renewing it every once in a while or adding a new feature or function to it every once in a while, right? And you start to build that experience where now the customer understands, hey, wait a second, I can do this in WhatsApp and I can have this conversation in WhatsApp with the business. And I think that that is a really, really important segue. A lot of people have this belief that like, if you build it, they will come. And I agree in a market like Africa, in many of the countries in Africa, if you build it, people will come, right? Because so many people are using WhatsApp. But I would still recommend thinking about when you build your WhatsApp experience, how are you going to let people know that it exists? It's not enough to just have the phone number. You can think about ads that click into WhatsApp. You can think about promoting it on your website, putting it in app, QR codes. Maybe you have a retail store and you can have a QR code that the person can scan on their checkout in order to get updates, things like that. We have short links that can be pasted anywhere in the web, of course. And then even IVR, right? I talked about that earlier, but if you know that people are calling in because they want to know where their package is and you can say, hey, you know what? You can just get this in WhatsApp. Press one and we're going to send you a WhatsApp message with your package information, right? Think about how all of those things make your lives easier by making your customers' lives easier, right? And so if you let them know that these are the ways they can reach you, it really helps to create extra value for that experience you've created, right? You've invested time and energy in building these experiences, and that doesn't matter if it's fully automated or fully manual, right? There are people involved in every step of this. And so you want to make sure that customers know, hey, wait a second. I didn't know that I could message you there. I'm going to go ahead and do that now, right? I prefer to do that than call into you, et cetera. So I really recommend it because I see a lot of businesses sort of say, all right, yeah, we're going to spend all the time building. And then they, they forget that like, you have to let people know that it's there, right? Otherwise they're not going to know. I don't think that the next few slides will be a shock to any of you, but at an overall level, we see higher results across every type of message. Um, that is sent in WhatsApp via, you know, other existing channels. And we'll call existing channels like email, SMS, uh, things like that, right? So when we see re-engagement on these legacy channels, we are way higher on re-engagement than most legacy channels, right? 58, 60%. I'm not talking about, a, you know, a, a, even a low double digit difference. These are multiples higher than what we see in other uh, platforms or more traditional platforms, right? Cart abandonment. Again, I message, I talked about the package, but what about if you didn't do the package yet and, and they didn't ship it or they didn't finish the, the order itself, right? We see really high conversion rates across all of channels. And again, way above existing channels that you might be using to do things like cart abandonment. Product alerts. Hey, I want to know when you have a new, uh, a new item coming to your store or when you've restocked or all of that type of thing. Or, hey, you bought something. Here are other features and accessories that go with that thing, right? And I know I'm using a lot of retail examples, but I'm sure, you know, across all types of use cases, even if you're doing B2B, by the way, there's a lot you can think about in how this relates or can relate to your existing business. So similarly, right, way higher. And it's like, I go slide to slide and I keep seeing 50s and 60% above, you know, standard, but, but that's what we're seeing, right? And so um, it's really worth thinking about how can you dive in and what are the options and what are the opportunities to do so? Um, last but not least, like even call to action. Hey, I just want to sign up. I want to get a lead. I want to do something along the way, right? Huge opportunity here to say, hey, let's try this in WhatsApp instead. And once you have that person opting in, then obviously you can continue to follow up with them with more messages and other types of things, right? And so again, what are these types of use cases? Pick one, think about one or two that you might be interested in, in trying. And what would it take to do that? And who are you using to do that? Huge opportunity there um, as well. So kind of in summary, right, when we look across um, all of the platforms and all of the markets, by the way, this is not something that we're only seeing in one or two markets. It's, it's really a global phenomenon. We see way higher results across WhatsApp. And I highly, highly recommend if you haven't started engaging with a partner like Netcore or you haven't started thinking about how do we actually get into WhatsApp, what should we do? I always recommend think of one or two problems that you could probably solve with a conversation instead of with getting someone on the phone or sending an email. And then using a partner, now you can help build those experiences and keep it light. Think about one thing you want to do well, nail it, and then continue to expand because that is how you will find success, I guarantee you. 
thank you very much. I will pass on to the next speaker and um, staying on as well for Q&A towards David, the end of the session. David, yeah, David, there's a quick question if yeah. we can. Um, uh, Samuel from Kenya was asking about the rates, the per transaction rates, and he was saying that the rates are quite high. Obviously, there's the Big Mac index, as you know, uh, and you know every every country's got to kind of like adopt uh, localized pricing. I think there's always a challenge in Africa because we've got volatile currencies, you know, very yes. different. Uh, rates and there was a mention of the of the rate in Turkey being lower. Could you maybe comment about uh, rates per in per interaction and and yeah, absolutely. So so first of all, I don't control the rate. So um, you know, but what I do do and what I always recommend is like let us know and let our partners know because like I said, we did lower the rates pretty significantly. I think in some markets it went down as much as eighty percent, right, on certain message types. And so the idea here is that we we understand that. Um, there's a lot of volatility in, in currency and, and in what's feasible. I think as you work with your partner, definitely raise those things and bring it back to us because we, we want to adjust you know, to what makes sense for the market. And you know, it takes time. I think it's also the, always this combination of like, how much demand are we seeing? And are there a lot of partners coming in? But I wanna say that we hear you. And so the feedback is actually what's really, really important, right? When something is not working, it's just as important as something is working. And so definitely like raise it up um, through your partners to let us know, hey, we're trying to do this, but it's cost prohibitive, or we've tried this and it's worked sort of well, but you know this rate or this specific use case, it doesn't work as well. What are some of the things that we can do? Because we bring that back and we evaluate the rates, and then you know, not me, but the team that evaluates them does make adjustments, right? And it's, I'm not just paying lip service; like we adjusted rates a month ago, right? And so we obviously don't want to get into a mode where we're adjusting rates all the time. We want to kind of find that sweet spot, but we definitely take it into account. So I appreciate the feedback. Wonderful, David. Thank you so much. Um, awesome. We'll, we'll hand over to Prashast, who's the Director of Product and Sales Specialist at Netcore Client, and really excited to hear about some of the applications of WhatsApp within the Netcore Marketing Automation Platform. Over to you. Thank you, Aaron, and thank you, David, for the wonderful setup. Um, in my entire presentation, what I will rather try and do is to reinstate the, the, the features that uh, David has just called out. We, in fact, work with multiple brands today, and we could see a lot of case studies and success stories, you know, uh, pouring in. We have handpicked a couple of few uh, so that it just, you know, uh, is more relevant to the audience. Uh, right. So this was our first case. Uh, this is with a gifting portal called as IGP, based out of India. Now, the major problem that these guys were facing was they, they were investing a lot of dollars in acquiring the customer. But there weren't any, you know, repeat purchases coming along. To counter this, you know, they they decisively opted it for a WhatsApp drip campaigns, meaning they pulled up a cohort of audience who kind of, you know, was shopping in the last festive season and has got dormant post that. And then a campaign was run to it. Now, if you look at it from the result standpoint, we could get a 11.6% incremental click-through rate and a 50% revenue contribution. What it translates to is the is just to you know reinstate the power that WhatsApp can bring to you. Uh, on the second side of this is for a automotive based out of India again with a similar problem is where they were trying to make a brand presence happen, uh, but there weren't any you know money test drives that were coming along. They have actually kind of built the entire product discovery to test drive, you know, booking process on the WhatsApp skin per se. And they have been driving some, you know, 32% increased engagement rates. And they could eventually make 6.5 times of the revenue ad spends. So what they're technically doing is they're spending dollars on various ad formats like Facebook, Insta. And from there, they're bringing on the audience on the WhatsApp app to kind of go about with the entire registration process, filling in which bike to select from, which dealership to kind of visit, and then actually booking the test drive. Right. The third use case is on the service aspect. Now, this again comes from an Indian bank called as HDFCB <laughs> Bank Limited. Now, the problem statement was pretty you know, clear here, was there was the, the wait time for a user to get answers to their query was rather delayed, right? And as a user psyche, they didn't want it to wait for a long to kind of get answers to their problem. Again, WhatsApp you know, chatbot was brought in into the uh, for play to kind of take in all this service queues. And if you look at the flow, actually, it actually does a lot of banking transactions as well. So uh, if you go along, 
it will help you with your uh, i'm sorry it seems like it crashed Wonderful world of technology. Give, give, I'm sure it'll restart. Now. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> yeah. Right. I apologize for this. Right, so like I was saying, this particular bot is capable of doing banking transaction within WhatsApp. So as a user, you know, you can select the type of account that you own. Furthermore, it will give you, you know, your pre-approved offers. You can make in a request for a credit card. You can actually check your balance amount, et cetera, et cetera, right on the WhatsApp front. What it eventually contributed to was a 50% increase in CSAT score and a 30% cost saving on the servicing aspect of it. Right? So that's pretty much on the use cases that we have deployed and the kind of you know success stories that we have had so far. Uh, we are, as we speak, we are currently also, you know, deploying a lot of other uh, chatbots, a new age chatbots, which are, you know, driven by generative AIs to kind of, you know, bring in more flavor and more accuracy to the end audience. So that's pretty much from my side over to you, Yanov. Thank you so much. Um, I think now we'll um, look at uh, generative AI and uh, some, some nice use cases um, from Suda. Uh, from Flyfish, and um, excited to hear your talks, Rita. Um, over to you. Awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, let me just share my screen very quickly. And uh, one second. Are you able to see my screen? You are able to see it? Great. Awesome. Okay. So uh, thank you, everyone, for this opportunity to speak with you today. My name is Sridhar. I run Flyfish, which is a generative AI platform for digital sales. Now, uh, we come in here as a partner with Netcore and also uh, as an ISV with WhatsApp. Now, uh, let me set a quick context here and then probably jump into a couple of demos, right? So um, today, I think the online customers are becoming extremely demanding, in fact, hyper-demanding. And that is actually showing up here in a Salesforce research where 71% of customers are expecting businesses to offer some kind of guidance while they're buying online. The, you know, gone are the days where the e-commerce is only convenient space. It's now they want more from e-commerce and that's where they want advice and holding guidance and all. Uh, now, uh, so that's because if you look at some of the context here, which the customers are expressing, uh, you know, somebody could be coming and saying, hey, I, I, my husband and I love road trips. We also go on scuba diving. Can you suggest a card for us with low interest rate and high credit limit? So the context is, you know, it's a much more nuanced and complex. Or somebody asking, um, I'm interested in getting a home loan and I'm looking for a single family home with, a, with three beds and three baths. Or somebody, a, a photographer saying, I'm planning a wedding photo shoot in Bali uh, I, you know, can you recommend a camera which is fast and accurate with accurate uh, autofocus and great for low light photography, stuff like that, right? So this, it's not very, very, it's not simple anymore. And, uh, and, and the current e-commerce websites are not able to provide this kind of context or advice, right? That's where the consultative uh, aspect of it comes in. Now, somebody, uh, a lady could be asking, I run a restaurant, I think the kitchen needs deep cleaning on a weekly basis you know, what kind of cleaning products do you suggest? Or somebody saying, I have dull skin, I want a product that gives me a glow, but I'm allergic to vitamin C, can you suggest something? Or somebody saying, you know, what can I cook for my dad on dad's day? He loves steak with avocado, but he hates onions and pepper. So this is, this is how the customers are thinking. And this is how the whole online customer uh, behavior is changing, right? That's, uh, let me just uh, quickly show you something. In fact, we went to one of the, one of the large uh, banks' websites and uh, you know, try and, we tried an, you know, a question here and you, you see it here. Uh, I run a small restaurant and we drive around uh, a lot in the Bay Area and any card with gas miles. And it comes back saying that, uh, you know, how can I redeem my cash back? And this completely irrelevant, right? So they're not able to, um, you know, handle the complexity uh, that people are expecting now. Similarly, in a cosmetics website, we tried this. And in, in fact, we made it simple. I have a dull skin. I want a product 
that gives me a glow. But you know, that should be simple enough. But it comes back and says, "Oops, you know, you know, uh, you know, we don't have it." Or you know, can you? Did you check the spelling? Stuff like that, right? And another one that we've tried is a fashion website. And here uh, again, uh, you know, we we put in saying that you know there is a theme party that's coming. What should I what should I wear, right? Uh, this is a college reunion party. Uh, the the theme is sun, sand, and surf. Can you suggest an outfit? And it came back with uh, some pillow covers and you know and stuff like that, completely relevant. And this is exactly where Flyfish comes in. We bring in consultative sales AI at scale everywhere. And of course, it can be you know beautifully embedded in the powerful WhatsApp platform, right? And you know we can provide right advice at the moment of truth based on the customer's very unique needs, goals, and context. Now, uh, how does Flyfish work? Um, you, know, you know, we can ingest any kind of material from the brand, like your product catalogs to your storefronts, marketing collateral, sales conversations in you know, audio and text, and marry all that data with personalization engines and other customer data from CRMs and train it within Flyfish and deliver consultative sales AI across channels, whether it's web, social media, messaging platforms, and mobile. Now, uh, let me just quickly jump into a couple of demos and show you how it works. Um, maybe first thing that I would uh, probably try is, uh, you know, let me uh, try it in WhatsApp itself and see how we can actually deliver this experience on WhatsApp, a consultative sales AI, sales AI experience. Now, um, let's say uh, I'm going to ask this question. Uh, I'm going to put in here, which is, Emily's wedding reception is on the weekend, and I'm wearing a long magenta dress with gold embroidered scarf. What makeup do you suggest? Right, and uh, and Flyfish would come back uh, with a with a right response and advising this person uh, in in that context. Right. So the, the first question is a little slow, and you know we'll wait for that. And in the meanwhile, I will also show you. Um, you know, how it could probably work in a banking scenario, right? In a banking scenario, there could be a, a button called AI advisor. And, uh, you know, we could go and ask a question saying, I run a small restaurant. Um, we make a lot of Costco purchases. Can you suggest a card with annual low annual fee? And the same question that I was talking about earlier. It comes back with a couple of cards and says, hey, these are the best cards and the recommendations. Now, WhatsApp, uh, you know, here, the question was, there's a wedding reception, I'm wearing a certain type of dress, and you know, what makeup do you suggest? And it says, based on the description of your outfit, I would suggest a makeup look that complements the colors of your dress and scarf. And here are a few suggestions. And there's an eye makeup, there's face makeup, and all of them are, uh, you know, uh, there's an advice, plus also the products that are recommended for this occasion. Now I could ask, I have uh, um, another question. I'm looking for a new skincare routine. I have combination skin, and I've been experiencing some, dry, experiencing some dryness and occasional breakouts. Do you have any recommendations? Here, you see, uh, it's a very, very complex query. And there's so many things that are being talked about here, right? Uh, it's not just a simple, you know, I want this, right? And here, um, the Flyfish advisory comes saying that based on your skin type and concerns, here are a couple of products, which is, um, you know, Bobby, uh, uh, an extra repair serum, uh, and also a hydrating intense night cream, right? And um, and, and it'll also tell you how it sort of uh, helps your skin moisturize and stuff like that. And uh, and maybe a couple of uh, one more question I will try here, um, and uh, and then we can uh, go into other demos as well. Uh, so here I have dark circles under my eyes. Do you have any products to help with that? It's very, very simple query, right? And you type this question on any cosmetics websites, it won't get you any answer, leave alone the product. Now here, it, it comes back with a couple of products. It says we have two products that can help with dark circles under the eyes. The first one is Bobbi Brown Extra Eye Repair Cream. And then there's one more uh, is the Potent Eye Cream. So now you, you can click on this product. Um, and um, one second, um, I, I, can, I can click on this product and uh, you know, uh, get more details about this product. I can add to cart and I can um, you know, enter the quantity all in the WhatsApp um, you know, uh, platform. And I can check out and you know, the payment link is generated and, and I, can, I can make the payment, 
right? So this is uh, this is the simple uh, you know example of how a powerful consultative sales AI can come in and give the right recommendations, right advice based on your unique context and totally hyper personalize it. And imagine selling the same thing, whether it is whether it is uh, in in banking or uh, financial services uh, or you know, insurance companies or you know retail, whatever. Here, you know, I, I also drive around a lot in the Bay Area. So uh, rewards for gas would be good. I make international purchases at least twice a month. And here are the cards that you can see, right? And uh, similarly, uh, another example that I would like to show you is uh, on, a, on a, let's say, retail uh, scenario. Um, there's this uh, photography advisor and it could be electronics advisor, it could be any advisor that you want to and that we can create. And in the photography advisor, I would just go and ask, um, hey, uh, I'm looking for uh, you know, a camera and I'm you know, gonna do some wildlife photography and you know, what kind of cameras do you suggest? It comes back and says, for wildlife photography, you know, here are the couple of example, a couple of couple of uh, cameras that we can suggest, and also mention why is it good for wildlife photography, and uh, and you may also need at the same time some you know some right lenses that's hundred to four hundred mm kind of you know uh, telephoto uh, lens and uh, some sturdy uh, travel tripod and and so on and so forth. So this is how um, the entire buying experience can be transformed. And uh, maybe just another quick example of how uh, even as simple as let's say you're buying some uh, cleaning supplies, right? And you can just uh, say that, look, I, you know, I, I'm, my kitchen needs deep cleaning on a weekly basis. What products do you suggest? And it comes back with the right products. Otherwise, otherwise, if you go to any of these websites, they throw nearly a uh, thousand or hundred, at least hundreds of products at you. And, and you know, it's completely confusing and never... Uh, getting to the right choice. So the world of search and filter e-commerce is getting very tiresome. That's why we need to bring in much more consultative sales experience, whatever the product may be. And that's the uh, that's the quick uh, demos. And let me just also talk about you know what we bring to the table. So we can using consultative sales AI, Flyfish can actually increase sales, cut customer acquisition cost, and increase NPS. Now, how do we do that? So if you look at the entire uh, you know customer life cycle, I'm you know this funnel is everybody is aware of. There's awareness, education stage. There's a consideration stage. There's a purchase stage and loyalty and advocacy. Across these various stages of customer life cycle, we can bring in different kinds of use cases. Um, you know, for example, for awareness, we can bring in consultative campaigns. It's, it's, it's just, it's not a campaign which is just sent out like an email or sent out like a, like a message, right? It can be, it can be uh, a consultative campaign where people can ask questions and, you know, get uh, advice even on the campaign itself, right? And then of course, from a, on, a, on an education perspective, personal AI advisors, um, you know, uh, and of course, across various uh, personal care related, uh, you know, uh, use cases we bring into the, we bring in. Now, um, at the con consideration stage, of course, product discovery and recommendations, and actually delivering consultative sales, basically bringing high touch to a an otherwise impersonal world, is what our vision is all about. And of course, the purchase AI assisted checkout, uh, and um, and of course, even after purchase, we can bring in after sales engagement again through Flyfish with providing personalized offers and a feedback feedback loop, maybe maybe a periodic surveys and help them actually, you know, become the repeat buyers and finally uh, become the advocates. And across these uh, stages, we can also measure the impact of it and 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 bring the required ROI for every business. So um, with this, let me end this presentation. And uh, you know, we are here for the question and answers. And also we can pretty much create, um, uh, we can actually come in when, if you really need it, uh, a one-on-one -on -one presentation along with Netcore and WhatsApp and, and you know, make your, take your business to the next level of actually providing consultative sales AI to your customers. Wonderful, Trito. thank you so much.
Uh, great. Um, we've got a few great questions from the audience. So I'd like to, all the speakers to please uh, turn on their camera and I'll direct the questions to you. Um, the first question from Decebo is, how does Netcore's WhatsApp offering enable businesses to deliver personalized content and offer offers based on user behavior and preferences? And what segmentation capabilities does this platform offer? Um, should we uh, maybe get a view from Netcore and from Meta around the segmentation and the integration between WhatsApp and, and Netcore's marketing automation platform? Right. So, yeah. I'll take that. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Sure. So how it technically works is our platform, you know, deeply integrates with your website and app. And there are a lot of customer data signals that kind of flows into the platform. So we are actually listening to your all your user activity and data signal, and we help you capitalize on those events and those you know cohorts of audiences, and then drive drip campaigns out of it. Although WhatsApp is just a channel, but the platform is capable of you know doing an only channel approach, meaning you can have a per customer strategy. Saying let's say she there is a morning email person, so probably the system will optimize and tell you to send emails to she there in the morning. Always, always, let's say Yaron is a more active on WhatsApp. So it will tell you to send him a WhatsApp on a specific day or a specific time slot. So that is how the platform brings in the entire power for the WhatsApp to campaigns. Wonderful. David, is there anything you'd like to add? I mean, ultimately, the, the WhatsApp platform is exactly that, right? It's just the platform. So we don't, we, as, as I think probably everybody on this call knows, like the conversations are encrypted. So from a meta perspective, all the segmentation work and all of that is exactly what Prashas just explained, right? It's happening through Netcore's platform. We are essentially just the tool um, to deliver that. Awesome, awesome. The next question was from Clarissa. She asked about some businesses may require custom functionalities and integration specific to, to their industries. How does Netcore Solution offer API extensibility to meet unique business needs and ensure a tailored experience linked into maybe financial systems, marketing, other marketing platforms, things like that? Yeah. Yep. So how we work is our APIs are pretty, you know, integratable to any platforms and applications. Obviously, we'll have to look at what platforms and what applications are we trying to integrate this to. But our scheduling is very simple. Our API is a plain vanilla, which can be, you know, taken to any third-party application to be built upon. And then the entire processes can be brought in. In fact, in the use case that you saw with HDFC, now this being a bank, a lot of data today cannot come out of the bank system, sorry, ecosystem, right? All we have done is we have done an API integrations with these technologies. This is the user query. We query the brand application and whatever the systems has to respond against the query, we carry that and show it to the end user. What we also do is, to the piece that she there mentioned, if there's any interaction that's happening within the bot, so let's say I as a user have come on a brand handle of a WhatsApp and I've done a, a event, let's say I have booked a test drive, which was a ESD's use case. Now all of this in real time can also be flown back to the brand application systems, again, through an API and web book integrations. Awesome. Great. And, and I think um, some great questions here. Thank you to the audience for, for asking all the questions. Um, can you explain the key differences between EdTech and MarTech and how media optimization strategies have evolved to integrate these two technologies? Um, this is quite interesting, David, for your uh, discussion around the variance meta offerings, and, and maybe you could give us the meta perspective and then just will give us the um, Netcore perspective. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it's it's interesting. We have a lot of discussions around, you know, Meta has a very big ads business. And so um, when it comes to WhatsApp specifically, I think that I personally look at um, ads as an entry point into WhatsApp, right? So instead of an ad taking you to a website or, or to a conversation or a lead form, it brings you into WhatsApp. And that's where one part of this intersects. The MarTech portion is really everything you can do, obviously, within WhatsApp itself, but then all of the marketing, direct marketing messages that you can send, right? And so they're really two different platforms, um, to be honest with you. And I think the key is, again, using a good partner that can connect the data insights from both sides of it, right? Because maybe actually you started in a conversation in WhatsApp, and now you want to retarget somebody based on something that they did in a conversation. And so you want to run an ad that brings you back to a conversation or actually brings you straight to a purchase page or whatever the case may be. Or maybe sometimes it works in reverse, right? You're running ads that say, hey, did you know you can get the best deals by, by following us on WhatsApp and by talking to us on WhatsApp? And now the MarTech is taking over where you're actually doing the follow-up, right? So you can really look at it from both sides, but one is really an entry point to the other is sort of how I, how I think about it. Right. 
Rishas, is there anything you'd like to add or should we go maybe? Yeah, in my opinion, if you bring it to a fundamental core, AdTech is all about getting that new customer for your business. And MarTech is all about retaining the customer that you have acquired. While you can do dollar spends on the ads to probably cater to a right targeting, right user base and get them on the platform, retention is also an equally important aspect of it. Because you've already spent a dollar to kind of get that. And then this is where the marketing technology helps you, you know, kind of, you know, strengthen the uh, entire customer life cycle value and drive more benefits out of it. Amazing. Shridhar, maybe from your perspective, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, in fact, uh, there's a question on uh, Flyfish. Uh, I'm just reading that. Maybe I can address that. Um, yeah. yeah, Flyfish, actually, uh, the question is, can it be seamlessly integrated in an existing platform or is it uh, a standalone system? Um, Flyfish uh, seamlessly integrates with, uh, with your existing tech stack, whether it is e-commerce platforms or your uh, CRM systems or even the channels. Right, like WhatsApp. So, um, so we sort of end to end uh, integrate with your existing uh, uh, systems, including Martech platforms. Excellent. There's a, a question from Liam. Uh, is it, the question is is the concept of WhatsApp for business mainly used around auto generated responses and AI generated responses, or are there also scenarios where customers will be interacting with real individuals from the business? Um, I, I think that. This is uh, obviously always very important when you're designing the customer journey. You want to try and deflect as many calls from uh, or, or chats for, from a human operator as possible and get the bot to self-serve. But you always need to be able to opt out in terms of best practice. And if you see no activity or anything like that, you might transfer it to a human operator. So it's often the combination of both. But uh, maybe, Prashas, you'd like to comment about how Netcore uses best practices to make sure that you get the right answers to the customer, whether it's self-service via chat or, you know, a human operator on the other side. Right. Yeah. Uh, like you rightly mentioned, uh, we are on uh, any chatbot on any platform, unless it doesn't have a human touch, there could be a lot of, you know, uh, fall traps where the customer queries might, might go on at end. How we probably vision the solution is to build an technology that's strong enough to you know cater to uh, all the incoming queries with this what we do is we back it up with a training module and a live agent module so if there are any queries that are not getting answered for the in frame can be transferred to a live agent and the customer query and customer expectations and experience should be met meanwhile there should be a module which can train the bot probably so that from the next time future you know similar queries similar observations can then be answered and taken care of Brilliant. Yeah, I think I think this generative AI and the ability to learn from the queries, making sure that our FAQ kind of knowledge base is improving all the time based on customer requirements. Obviously, if one customer had this question, other customers will have a similar question and we can just learn from that and constantly reinvent uh, the knowledge base to try and help customers with the first contact resolution every single time through the chatbot, because that's the ideal most cost effective channel to, to serve customers. So it makes a lot of sense. Uh, David, is there anything else you'd like to add on that topic? No, I think I think you covered it, right? I think the, the key always is get the person the thing they want as fast as possible. If you can Absolutely. do that and it's it feels like a person, but it's a not a person, great. If it doesn't feel like a person, probably also great, right? The key is that you want to get it as fast as possible and not not have that. And then I think Professor, you, you mentioned as well. Have somebody to talk to if the person gets to a state where they're like, I need to talk to somebody, right? Don't, don't put them out then into the abyss uh, because then you're just doubling frustration for, for no reason. Absolutely. It's quite interesting. I'm getting all my questions via WhatsApp at the moment. So we're actually using WhatsApp to facilitate the session today as well. Uh, much easier for me to look at my phone than look at the screen in multiple <laughs> areas. But uh, um, there was another question um, around... Um, um, the brand, uh, how can the brand define and establish clear boundaries for the AI bot to ensure it doesn't provide responses or promises beyond the brand's current capabilities? Um, oh. I, I think maybe Sridhar, you'd like to take that. You seem yes, to be yes, obviously, yeah, um, yeah. This is a great question again. Um, I think so. So, uh, generative AI in general tends to hallucinate, and that's where it sort of tends to go sort of beyond the. Uh, beyond the boundaries. And uh, Flyfish, within the platform, we built the guardrails in such a way that uh, it can never answer anything beyond uh, a specific brand-related question. Now, if, if you ask anything outside that, it will probably 
uh, tell you I'm not equipped to answer that question, but you know I'm, I'm here to help you with with this. Uh, so we can we can demonstrate that to you as well. Yeah, perfect. It's exactly what we do on digitalmall.com. We actually say that we, I'm still learning. You know, the chatbot says I'm still learning. Can I transfer you to a live agent and automatically transfer to a live agent? And then we learn from that interaction, as Prashas mentioned, and then we try and improve the bot capability to be able to learn more and be able to uh, give what's called, uh, you know, first contact resolution next time rather than having to get a human operator to, to actually deal with it. Um, Great. And then another question just came in. They're flying in, which is great. It means the audience is really engaging with us. Um, it says, how can a business handle high volumes of customer inquiries and messages on WhatsApp? And what tools does Netco offer to streamline that process? High volume. All right. So currently we operate at a volume scale of 1,000 messages per second. That's the maximum throughput that, that Meta offers. Uh, so if you quantify this and probably extrapolate this on an eight uh, working hours timeline, uh, you would have a pretty, pretty you know, decent size that you can cater to. Uh, how it actually works is, see, WhatsApp can be looked upon with two lenses. One is you look at it as an effective channel of conversations where all of your audience are sitting. It has got a high eyeball rates, et cetera, et cetera. What you can also look at it at as an additional ecosystem that you are building. So let's say you, today you have an app, you have a website. You can similarly have a WhatsApp chatbot powered, you know, ecosystem, which is capable of letting user discover a product, go about, you know, filling in with their queries, probably speak to an agent, understand more of the product, do a consultative or a handhold selling process, and then eventually take care of the entire sales funnel. Now, in both the approaches, the way we have structured upon is RC suit today, like I said, sits in system, in, you know, listening to all the data signals that's happening across your ecosystems bring in one view to you and then powers this with the you know whatsapp capabilities so all in all whatsapp is just a delivery pipe in other words if i may put so but what has to be sent who who needs to read this message what content needs to be sent at what time needs to be sent is is being monitored by the ai driven platform that we offer brilliant right yeah um there was um, another question around reporting and analytics features that Netcore provides around the WhatsApp solution. How can businesses track the effectiveness? Obviously, in business, what we get is what we measure. So we always want to learn and effectively look at stats and see how we can improve co conversions, you know, whatever the campaign objectives are. Yeah. Yeah. So like I said, a lot of data signals today flowing in actually gives you the entire funnel movement. So one for sure, you would know that this particular customer has registered on a website, has done a product discovery, has probably spoken to the agent, so on and so forth. Within WhatsApp, what you can also alternatively do is set goal conversion. So let's say if you have six moduling, one is on product discovery, one is probably to watch a product film, third is to fill in a lead inquiry, et cetera, et cetera. All of this can be termed as a goal. And you can actually, you know, capture which user coming from what channel, right, has completed what percentile of the entire movement, and then probably plot a user journey graph in it. Uh, when it comes to WhatsApp one-way messages, apparently there are only limited informations that gets shared. Now these reads in the lines of, you know, uh, message sent receipts you'll get. You will get message delivered receipts. Uh, you will get red receipts provided the privacy setting of the user is configured so. And you would obviously get the failed receipts with the exact reason. So there could be cases where you're trying to reach a customer on a WhatsApp uh, on a particular number, but he's not registered on WhatsApp, right? So obviously all, all of those messages would fail. So you would get a failed receipt saying that the number does not exist on WhatsApp. Brilliant. There was a, a question from William um, around security. Obviously, security and privacy is very important, especially when we deal with PIR data. So in South Africa, we call it Poppy Protection of Personal Information Act, uh, GDPR in Europe, uh, which I know uh, NetCore is compliant to GDPR and Poppy and California Act in the US. Um, you know, maybe uh, just to give some comfort to the audience, you can explain how we hash custom information, uh, how we protect it, and what the security measures that NetCore takes in its system to protect PII data and generally uh, security measures that you take. So one thing for sure is we do not store any PI data when it comes to WhatsApp solutioning, right? Whatever whatever is being transmitted in the pipe is done in an encrypted format. In terms of logs, we definitely have a mobile number because we need to show those analytics. But all of these data, again, is, is compliant to all the statutory security protocols and we purge data every 90 days. So on the platform, you'd be able to probably look through the analytics only for the last three months window, post that all the data gets scraped out. 
the platform that we give away again is a two-factor authenticated platform so it's just not somebody has catch hold of your let's say username and password will not be able to log in unless they do not authenticate to the otp etc so all of those protocols and security measures are in place and to give you that comfort, today we are working with all banking regulatories. Uh, we have cleared all sorts of national and international certifications. We are GDPR and Poppy compliant, as you rightly mentioned. So. Yeah. And also you work with big telcos uh, like Airtel and India, and we working with a few prospects in South Africa, which is quite exciting. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really excited about the opportunity. Um, I don't see more questions coming in. I just wanted to mention to the audience that we have uh, the ability, if you're interested in doing a proof of value, um, you know, around Netcore, uh, our team would be from DSG and Netcore would be delighted to look at Flyfish, look at Netcore, uh, play with WhatsApp. This is the advantage of being a SaaS platform. We can get you up and running fairly quickly. We can get you to see results quite quickly. And we'd be really, really excited about working with you. I'd, I'd like to take the next four minutes to just maybe get some closing comments from each one of the panelists. So we can kind of like give leave the audience with, with a last nugget um, should we start? You you went last, Rida. How about I uh, start with you? Okay. Why don't Great. you go first? Fantastic. Um, so WhatsApp is already a, a great platform and it is a very, very powerful platform. Now, from a Flyfish perspective, we can make that powerful platform even more powerful and making it almost like you know a personal consultant that you can refer to at any point of time. So it's not just uh, it's not just about don't look at platform uh, WhatsApp as a, you know as a sort of a notification uh, platform where you can send notifications or you know send your uh, you know send your messages marketing messages but actually delivering real uh, results from a business point of view and increasing sales uh, using Netcore and Flyfish together. Brilliant, thank you, Shridhar and uh, Prashast. What how about you? Right, in my view. See, WhatsApp is a phenomena in making, right? There is, is a dramatic shift happening. People, you need to reach out to people where they're sitting. So if you look at stats on an average, and every individual spends around 40 minutes of their day looking at WhatsApp. So their day starts with checking WhatsApp and probably ends with also, you know, checking the WhatsApp. So that is where your audience are. Now, having said that, you obviously need an engine and a powerful engine to let you drive maximum ROIs out of WhatsApp. And that is what we are committed to. Yeah. So Sridhar called his company Flying Fish. Fish with a fish R, right? That's what you're saying, Prashant. <laughs> That's right. Okay. David, maybe a last kind of comment from you. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, first off, thank you for having me. And it's it's been it's always insightful, right? To 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 work in with, with partners. And I think that's the key, right? Like lean on your partners, especially um to to help guide you in this right like for Shastin team and, and Tridar and team like, they work in this every single day and, and they work closely with us and so um it's really important to lean on that knowledge to, to help get you off the ground and, and you know like I said a few times and I'm known for saying like start small start simple that that's always you know my biggest recommendation brilliant 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 um so thank you everybody for your time today um I really really appreciate it and if you'd like uh more information, please reach out to us um, on www.dsg.co.za. You can also scan this QR code that you saw there. And uh, we're really, really excited uh, about the opportunity of working with you and utilizing WhatsApp. I hope you have a great morning in South Africa. David, thanks for joining from Israel. Shridhar and Prashat, I'm, I know you're joining from India. I'm in Vegas, so we've got a really good global uh, conference. And, and I wish everybody a great day ahead. Thank you so much. All the best. Thank you, guys. Namaste. Bye. Okay.